Thank you for coming, and Brooke, thank you for having me. It's been such a pleasure to be invited to be a part of this project. Body pressure. Process much of the front surface of your body, palms in or out, left or right cheek against the wall as possible. Press very hard and concentrate. Form an image of yourself. Suppose you had just stepped forward on the opposite side of the wall, pressing back against the wall very hard. Press very hard and concentrate on the image pressing very hard. The image of pressing very hard. Press your front surface and back surface toward each other and begin to ignore or block the thickness of the wall. Remove the wall. Think how various parts of your body Press against the wall, which parts touch and which do not. Consider the parts of your back, which press against the wall. Press hard and feel how the front and back of your body press together. Concentrate on tension in the muscles, pain where bones meet, fleshy deformations that occur under pressure. Consider body, hair, perspiration, odors, smells. This may become a very erotic exercise. Bruce Mountain in 1974. What happens in a room is shocking. Suites is a fabricated space where expectation collides with reality. We are shocked when our lovers turn out to be weak or unkind or when you find that the desire you believed you had going in turns out not to be your true desire, but worse, all you ever wanted. Warmth is shocking when we are cold, when we are blasted by a bucket of ice water in the heat, we are shocked. Commercialized shock just annoys me. The plastic place between pleasure and pain, one gif at a time. Women wide-eyed at what is expected, men wide-eyed by unfettered permission. The gray area between loneliness and tenderness is a softer shock, a slower, more mellow explosion. What is shocking? When we are born, we are shocked into breathing, we are shocked by our first orgasm, we are as shocked by natural beauty as we are by the physical manifestation of mental and physical disease. We are shocked when our hearts break, by grief, shocked by violence, shocked by drugs and trauma, shocked by the realization that we are going to die. I was awarded a residency in Guanlan, China early this year, and before I left for America, I asked my assistant to clear my computer in order to, for it to run faster. My files weren't labeled, and they fell out of their folders. Imagine my shock when I opened my external drive and all I saw were numbers. What remained on my desktop were screenshots of pornography I'd curated down to what appeared to me to be accidental moments of tenderness. Pornography is illegal in China. Google and Facebook are not allowed. And Instagram was shut down weeks before I arrived. Their search engine, Bing, persistently scolded me for what I was looking for. I was living in a 500-year-old village, surrounded by lotus fields, and singing frogs. And here was what I had to work from. Being hosted by the Chinese government had its drawbacks. I was at their disposal, and my work was shocking. Government officials came through and glass walled face and looked over my shoulder. The women would laugh uncontrollably and point, so sexy. The, <laughs> <laughs> the men took pictures. My copper etchings and aquatints were muddled by splatters of silkscreened ink, and I named every situation after bedsheets, linen, silk, cotton, muslin, 
satin. The in-house calligrapher gently leaded these simple materials in each corner. And in the end, to my shock, my at first resistant to assist me Chinese assistance darted at the chance to each own a print. Sweets is a multidisciplinary artistic collaboration, a visually narrated response to the residual energy left behind in hotel rooms. Playing on the facade of private and commercial space and exploring the sentimentality of who we are in relationship to our sexual partners and desires, I pulled the curtain and tipped the blinds so the light would not spill in. A hotel door closes gently. I drew anonymous solos, duets, and threesomes. What is it to be vulnerable and expectant, willing and ready to perform, aroused and ashamed, dismissed and praised, electric and embarrassed? How does it feel to be loved invisibly? What exists in this room and what people expect are very different. Any scene of aggressive penetration or physical manipulation is replaced by emotional movement and a romantic narrative that exists only in this block, in this temporal sealed space. The hotel fights to maintain the illusion that this room is yours, but in truth it is the most <coughs> unsecure space you can purchase. The fox kept a rabbit. The cat found their nest of milk-stained fresh linen and all of the rest. The snake had a bird he could not bear her flight, and he caught her fast heart slipping into the night. Mirrors in pain reflect no sun. We hunt for a fresh flush when our hunger is young. Break me like bread, still warm at the seam. Raise me to rise to your fingers like cream. The crease of my hip hips crests the curve of your thigh. Fists gather by sheets. I swallow dark sky. A landscape of language where words are lonesome and embrace unseen by all and no one. Reflection of sudden and trembling grief spreads ink-like stains colorless emits relief. Cat strikes a rabbit, snake bites the bird, hotel door closes, now what have we heard? The sound of unclasping unfastens, unlatches. We bolt from our time, but it is already past us. My prints are framed on these walls in the style of what hotels cheaply attempt to mimic an or mirror, gilded, dark stained, dovetailed walnut paper floating on linen. The prints are not what we see in standard hotels, no landscapes, no flowers. We see instead moments of time-sensitive intimacy, ink butterflies under glass. The hundreds of drawings that brought me to these prints wrap the external wall of the hotel room. No cell phones or cameras are allowed in the space in exchange for a key to enter the room, for an undocumented. And often, because our phones are now our watches, time abstracted experience. As I began to define what I would need to refine the space, the television was my biggest challenge, a looming reflective shadow. Activating it as a surface became my first priority. I wanted to create a private experience drawn out from the false pretense that the hotel room we have just entered is so clean that it has not been preoccupied. There is a beautiful Lou Reed line in Pale Blue Eyes. If I could make the world as pure and strange as what I see, I'd put you in a mirror I'd put in front of me. Hotel rooms feel safe, but as Avita once said, shadows cannot see themselves in the mirror of the sun. We enter any room with a television on, and it appears we are not alone. Someone has already been here. They are here, or they are about to return. I contacted Jane Gotch to choreograph a piece involving professional dancers that would mimic my drawings and bleed in and out of the reflection of the television screen. Her proposed budget included rehearsals, installation advice, video editing, and payment for the choreography of four co-curated professional movement artists Juliet Remmers, Leonard Gaiden, Kat Mahari, and Angie Sansone. From a classically trained ballerina to a competitive street dancer, Johanna Brooks, an incredibly talented emerging videographer, filmed and co-edited the project. I was awarded an inspiration grant to buffer these costs. I've been collaborating with dancers for 15 years, but I have just recently started to work with videographers on documenting the ideas behind these collaborations. 
just as there is a gray area between documentation and performance, set design and installation. I'm striving to define the delicate spaces between reality and projection. My work is delicate and disturbing, deceptively simple executions of complicated subjects. My line documents early sexual awakenings, the visual manifestation of disease, and the social anxieties of realized and fictional characters. By illustrating stifled habits, residual adolescent vulnerability, and issues of beauty and popularity, my images document trends in fear, private and public, commercial and independent. One evening I arrived to my studio and the space behind me was holding auditions. I considered going home to draw, but I knew I would spend more time being upset about the clutter than resolving it. The Hotel Phillips has an ongoing artist in residency program. I called the hotel and begged for a room. I brought my basics, pen, paper, ink. I responded to myself in a space, attempting to maintain a neutral energy. As I felt the shadows of bodies sleeping, fucking, showering, in a room redressed every day to appear unfettered by any recent happenings. The work in suites began to spill out of me. I ordered a bullet rye with an ice cube the same diameter as my glass from room service and drew without stopping until dawn. When I went to post a few images to social media the next day, I realized the bodies were too exposed for Instagram and Facebook. I began to use the ink as a veil. I released and manipulated where the pigment fell across the page and focused on masking nipples and genitals. The black pools rolled around the heads and became sinister and succubus. Opening the door between dancers and fine artists builds a dialogue that showcases the ability of a creative community to collaborate. We have a lot of strong art and movement scene and I'm always seeking out high quality, self-committed creatives in both fields. In the case of Suites, I've aligned myself with an international transportation company, Belger Kardec and the Hotel Philips, a national chain of boutique hotels based in my Milwaukee to afford the construction and furniture for three month long, the three month long show I proposed. Our hope, me, dancer sponsors, is that we will be able to travel the exhibition and build it out on site. With the artwork being framed, the televised dance piece being a choreographed film, and the objects in the hotel room being portable and transportable through this specific sponsorship, there is potential for the Milwaukee Museum of Art to host suites, as well as a myriad of other galleries, commercial and alternative spaces. The drawing in the room became my suite. I felt that night phosphorescent, glowing alone in temporary luxury. We talk about soft shocks and hard shocks, feeling the wind knocked out of our body. Over and over again, I am told this show is not what people expect. To wrongly assume something triggers embarrassment, and embarrassment is a form of shock. Shame shocks us to our core. The expectation of illicit images is eroded by a penetration of sadness and beauty. We are shocked by regret. I love the nature of using such an old set of tools in the context of contemporary digital fields. Working the paper and posting the images online has been as immediate as the responses from one image to the next. The print process I've been working with for 20 years was founded in the late 1500s and I've drawn with pen and ink since childhood. Sweets captures the immediacy of both these processes with the added energy of the video. With the financial support of Belgia Cartage and Hotel Phillips, a grant from Arts KC, borrowed garments from Tom Paolini and Fine Folk, jewelry from Linda Lighton, and the added visual elements of the collaboration from Jean Gotch and Johanna Brooks and the dancers. I've created something that layers in Lester's space. Something electric and fantastic holds up outside and carries beyond the hotel room gallery experience. I called the Hotel Phillips and asked them the number of the first room I arrived to. Is there a more pliant word than reservation? 1801 also happened to be the last room we filmed in. In creative endeavors there are these magical and kismet moments that happen. The plaque number on the door and the name of the film were suddenly mirrored. So the beginning and the end were sealed. If art is the ability to turn material into thought, I had the gift of space as my material. As I step back from the journey of this work, I am floored by the emotional and physical travel it entailed. I have learned the only shock worse than the totally unexpected kind is the expected shock we refuse to prepare for. <laughs>